On October 26, the new Bundestag is going to be sworn in. And among the new members will be Armin Laschet. Despite several predictions that he won't be, I had talked about all these projections that said uh, the CDU was pulling too bad in order for him to make it. Turned out not the case. And this means he will not longer be able to serve as a member of the state parliament in Nordrhein-Westfalen or as the state's minister president. This means also, of course, there needs to be a successor. And on Tuesday, he introduced said successor, current transportation minister Hendrik Wüst. Wüst will also be confirmed as the state party's chair, a position Laschet had held nearly nine months, now concurrently with being federal party chair uh, on October 23rd in or at a party convention in Bielefeld. Wüst uh, is kind of from the same position as Laschet within the party, um, probably one of the reasons why Laschet chose him. He is also Roman Catholic and Laschet likes to surround himself with people who have the same religion as he does. Uh, Wüst comes from the town Rede in the district Borken 1, which he has represented in the state parliament since 2005, and he won his third re-election campaign in 2017 with uh, 53% which is quite impressive. And one of the reasons for that appears to be that he's very civically engaged in his uh, hometown and home district by being a member of several associations and clubs. Um, so that works in his favor. And according to the state constitution, you need to be a member of state parliament in order to be minister president. So the city actually is doing a very intelligent uh, thing here by choosing somebody who lives in a very secure district. But the question has to be, is Wüst, who is actually pretty young with just 46 years old, um, a good minister president, a good choice for NRV? And so far he does not seem to have a lot of major legislation under his wings, despite uh, now serving for four years as a state minister and since um, 16 years as a member of state parliament. But he is very loyal to the CDU, so that probably also played a role. And we, when we look at his history in the CDU, we might be able to discern if he is going to be a good minister president or not. He actually uh, joined the CDU in 1990 when he was still a teenager and co-founded the local chapter of the Jung Union, the youth wing of the CDU CSU in his hometown. Uh, throughout the 1990s, he then rose through the ranks of the JU, that's short for Jung Union, and in 2000 was voted to be the state chapter's share and with that became the uh, well became a member of the of all CDU state party leadership in the same year he graduated as a lawyer and started to work for UTOP International GmbH uh, lobby group so there is already the first red flag. He is a lobbyist, or at least a former lobbyist. Then in 2002, he was voted in as part of the NRV delegation into the uh, federal party leadership of the CDU. And some of you might think, so they voted a lobbyist directly into federal leadership, but that is not in of itself really noteworthy, which, well, should probably go to show how corrupt the party actually is. Then, in 2004, he was named the official lawyer for YouTube International, but uh, stepped down from all his positions within that organization in 2005 to run for his district Borken 1 in NRV and won the first race with 58% with, uh, of the vote, which not only impressive, but way above the already very impressive average for the CDU. In 2005, the CDU got 45% of the vote in NRV. And the reason why that is impressive is that NRV was for a very long time the fortress for the SPD. Now, um, it, he got into parliament as a member of the 
of the leading caucus and in 2006 he was then voted as the new state general secretary after not longer running as the JU state chair. As the as one of the of several relatively young uh, state party general secretaries, uh, he then in 2007 co-authored with five other young prominent um, and uprising members of the CDU CSU, including one Markus Söder, a position paper titled "Moderner Bürgerlicher Konservatismus" (Modern Civic Conservatism), and. In that paper, he, they, the six men, criticized the Merkel government and CDU party leadership. Remember, the party leadership, Wüst at that point, had been a member of since five years for focusing too much on the social and liberal rules of the or roots of the party in order to have more in common with the SPD within the first Merkel-led Grand Coalition government and ignoring the civic conservative roots of the party. In other words, they wanted a more um, culturally conservative party. So, Wüss positioned himself as being a cultural conservative, while some of the co-authors, like uh, later Niedersachsen Minister President David McAllister, distanced themselves from the paper in the years after the fact. Uh, Wüss never did. So, he appears to still hold on to the idea that the CDU should... Um, represent a more culturally conservative uh, position within the German public. Uh, so for somebody who's socially progressive like me, that is again a red flag. He in... so and... well, I don't necessarily want to blame him or the other five for the Wertunion or the AfD, but we have to keep in mind that at the time position papers like these gave fodder to the further right wing in the CDU that criticized Merkel for being too moderate, too uh, liberal, that she was social democratizing the CDU. And this later turned into essentially, uh, yeah, it, it turned these people into more radicals. It, the, people on the further right wing of the party and radicalize them into founding groups like the Wertunion or leaving the party and joining the AfD. So while that is not necessarily the fault of Wüst or Söder or McAllister or any of the other three, we can't ignore this um, little, the, this historical fact that it was these position papers, this criticism, especially from young upstarts in the party at the time that created the atmosphere that over several other stations later led to those things happening. Now um, back to Wüst himself. In 2009 he had to pay 6,100 euro to the state parliament because he had forgotten to register uh, premium payments to his private health insurance company. In Germany, uh, the, your employer pays part of the, your premiums that are taken out of the, your payroll tax to your health insurer. And he thought because it was privately health insured that didn't matter for him, so he didn't have to register, but the state still paid these uh, employ the employer part of the premiums. And once that came out in December of 2009, he had to pay the money back. And I will, be, and I will say it probably was a mistake because he was not the only one who did that. It turned out that it, since 1994, in these 15 years, 20 uh, state politicians of all um, made that mistake. Um, what was more damaging in this case for Wüst was that it put him in the public spotlight just as the year 2010 started. In, the, in May, there was a new state election. And there, the the CDU lost 10% of the vote. They only got 35% this time around, just as, as the SPD. But this major loss, and the SPD only losing 2% compared to 2005, gave the SPD and the Green Party the uh, justification to form a new majority government between them and kicked uh, Jürgen Rutgers, the CDU minister president, out of office. 
And one of the reasons for this major loss was a corruption scandal that hit the CDU in early 2010, which le led to Vu stepping down as the uh, general secretary of the state party. In March of the year, all major parties held uh, state party conventions ahead of the election, and all but Die Linke invited corporations to buy ad space as sponsors. The CDU, as a lot of newspapers already reported, uh, several weeks ahead took more money than any other party. And then in February, the Der Spiegel dug a little deeper and found out that the CDU was, was actually selling appointments with Rutgers to privately talk to him to these corporations if they paid a little extra money. While I personal, personally already think that corporate sponsorship of these party conventions should count as corruption, most people probably would disagree, but what most people agree upon is that selling personal uh, speaking arrangements with the minister president to corporate interest is corruption. And as I said, this led to Wu stepping down because he took as state's party general secretary the personal responsibility for it. And when you think, oh, he showed that he can take responsibility, he still ran for office in Borg 1 and got 50% of the vote. And after he was not longer the state party general secretary, but still more or less in state party leadership and also still in the federal party leadership, mind you, he started to work for uh, another group, the state chapter of the Union of German Newspaper Publishers, and became their executive director. And he also became the CEO uh, for, a, for the news company Pressefunk GmbH in KKG. And then in 2012, he stepped out of being a member of federal party leadership. Um, while also again winning his district board one in a snap election with 46%, his so far worst result, but still very good. Two years later, he became the CEO of a holding company, Dein FM Holding Game Behind Kokagi. That apparently, from what I can gather, is, is involved also in investments and speculation on property. So yeah, that's kind of disgusting. And a member of the state party leadership who is that important within your state party probably should not be involved in several private endeavors on the side, but since that is absolutely legal in Germany and apparently nobody thinks that that is actually corruption, it should be illegal, nothing stopped him from doing so. He stepped down from all of these positions, the two CEO positions and the executive director position for the NRV state chapter of German news publishers, uh, in order to become transportation minister under Laschet. And that is the entire history that, in my opinion, matters about Henrik Wüst. He's a, he was a former lobbyist. I would say he's corrupt. Everybody who worked as a lobbyist, in my opinion, is probably corrupt. And he is socially conservative, which as a social progressive, I also reject. So will he be a great, so will he be a great uh, minister president for NRV? Probably not. But only time will tell. Still, I hope that the SPD and the Green Party get enough votes to kick out the CDU-FTP coalition come May.